He's only done it again. Kriegel Mara has won the Red Bull X Alps for a record eighth time. What a day it's been, day seven of this amazing Red Bull X Alps. My name is Tarquin Cooper and this is the, the wrap-up show where I discuss all the, the day's events with Gavin McClurg, who'll be joining just in just a moment. And what a day it's been. It began early this morning in uh, the car park of Dreisin and with Kriegel saying to his assembled crews and followers and fans, are you ready for a run? And boy, did he run. He set off at breakneck pace up to the footpath and just didn't stop. Got onto the, the Klettersteig route. And this area, you know, you have to just... The images really just give it justice to, to, to see it. It's just such a beautiful place, the Trecime, the Dry Zinnen. Um, and the route followed a historical uh, Via Ferrata, um, the trails that were built during the, the First World War. And Kriegel just, just set off and moved fast. And uh, it took, he was an hour onto the summit. Uh, just when we got to the technical section, I was just behind him. He turned to me and said, let the adventure begin. And he climbed very fast, got to the top, didn't waste any time. And then at one point it looked possible that some athletes could launch from the top, but it was blowing super hard. So he followed the route all the way down to the north side, to the launch site um, next to the Dry Zinn and Hutter. Uh, and uh, from there, he was able to launch down to um, Sexton. Uh, Sexton, he was able to uh, sign, the the, sign the, turn, uh, the sign board and move on through the course. Sexton, of course, is the first time that we have had um, them in the, uh, as a turn point this year. So um, after uh, Sexton, we then had a, an amazing uh, afternoon as Kriegel then made it to uh, Zellemse this afternoon in the record time of six days six hours and one minute and there were amazing scenes here on the shores of Selim Sea as he spiraled down followed shortly afterwards by his uh, supporters uh, landing on the float and it was uh, it's just an incredible um, incredible performance so another amazing performance that is uh, happening at the moment is that of um, Ellie Egger uh, at the back and uh, she is hoping to be the first athlete to uh, make goal, um, the first female athlete to make it to, uh, to the finish. Never happened before. Her original goal was just to make uh, Mont Blanc. Uh, that goal has now changed. She's hoping to, be, uh, to make it all the way. And this is what she had to say earlier. It was booming. It was really nice flying. Yeah. It was just chilly, nice to almost back wind. So great. Excellent. Now what are you expecting for the next leg? Ah, I think it will be fun, but I have to wait a bit for my supporters because it was a little too fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this last flight coming here was just amazing. It were super nice conditions, nice turmoils, a little bit of backwind, no lee side turmoils like yesterday, but just nice. And so I'm super happy to be here. Looking forward to go on now. So, Gavin, welcome. Quick thoughts on Ellie? Well, I just got the huge privilege of, of flying with her down the Inn Valley when she made a really good move early in the race. I have no idea when that even was. I've completely lost track of time. But we flew about 70K down to the Laramoose together, and I was so impressed with her poise and her team strategy and their, their strengths. Their, she's just she's awesome. And she's an amazing pilot an amazing athlete and it's just i'm so excited for her to round this incredibly hard long amazing course in record time and i'm excited to see her in zell in probably a couple days she's she's just she's awesome and a well-deserving performance she is going to be the one to watch um you've been at Cimatoza all day uh what's been happening can you tell us what's been going on with the mid-pack well, first I have to say, you know, this was a turn point back in 2015, my first Red Bull X Alps. And, you know, then, then I, I had to do what everybody did today. You come in top land, have a quick bite to eat and get back in the air as fast as you possibly can. I feel very privileged. I feel like this is what a great job I've got to come up here. I just caught Paul Gusherbauer relaunching. And then I saw within 10 minutes of one another, I saw Paul Rito, uh, sorry, not Paul, but Rito, uh, 
Mikael, Spike, Nicola, and Max Lloyd will all come in within minutes of one another. Huge smiling faces. They were all talking about, you know, seven meter climbs today and really high base. And they were thrilled to just be doing so much flying. I mean, this place is just a wall of gorgeousness. It's so spectacular. Um, I'm sitting right now, the, the refuge is right behind me. And yeah, just a, a, a very, very special day to be able to hang out here and, and see these amazing athletes come through and get back in the air Mikel uh and 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 no and Nicola yeah they had to launch when it, it suddenly turned really catabatic and quite strong and their way out of here was really interesting to watch it was it was amazing so you know it's just something that you, it's in your blood at this point in this stage when it's when it's not right you just deal with it and still make it work and they're well on their way to the next turn point they were they had a they had a wonderful afternoon in the sky and Gavin, I should remind um, the audience also that you gave a, a brilliant wrap up of all the mid pack and all the athletes who are still kind of coming through uh, this morning at 9.30. So for anyone who didn't see that, go back and find that live at 9.30. Gavin sitting in the, in the truck just, you know, with notes and just reading out and, and just really, I think, giving a, putting flesh on the bone for all these athletes' experiences um, who are coming through uh, southern Italy. So um, that's, that's a great one to watch. Um, now let's return to um, the main story of the day, which is, you know, Kriegel Maros' historic eighth win. We say historic every edition. How does he do it? What is his secret? It's so funny, isn't it? I mean, every year that I took part, we always talked about in the pre-race week, all the, the talk in the camp was always, this is the year. Somebody's going to get him. Who's, gonna, who's it going to be? And that was definitely what I was hearing this year in the pre-week camp. You know, t this year it's going to be Maxime or it'll be Aaron or it'll be Patrick. And we got to see again just how extraordinary he is. And the secret is there's a lot of them, but he does everything just a little bit better. He talks about getting that little bit more final glide at the end of the day. He's just incredibly solid with his team, even when he has to choose a new team just a week before the race. You know, he, 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 he had to put together a completely new team this time around. It's remarkable, but he just runs an incredibly tight ship. And I think if there is one, if we have to say there's one secret, I don't know if we can, but if we have to say there's one, it's that he trains harder than everybody else. I think he works at this harder than everybody else. And he just, and he had, of course he has all the experience, but back in 2009, he was the one that basically invented light gear. You know, he really pushed that. We, they, we didn't have light gear be, be, before then. This year he's got calves the size of the moon. You know, he's just, he trains hard, he works hard, he's disciplined. And, and he puts it all together. And then at the end of the day, when it's rowdy, when it's wild, when it's crazy, there are people that can probably fly as well as him in World Cups and that kind of thing and know how to fly as fast, but there's no better mountain pilot in the world. He's the best. And I mean, he's the Kelly Slater of paragliding. And, and I, can't, I, I think we're just gonna see him again and again. What is amazing is that this time, he really had a run for his money, he didn't he? I mean, we've just seen incredibly phenomenal racing from a whole pack of athletes. So he's being chased really hard, but he's still one step ahead. I forget what, 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 what day it was, but he, there was that day in, in Switzerland between um, uh, Pittsburgh uh, and, uh, and Fisch where the whole gaggle um, flew over his head. And that, that could have been, for another athlete, just game over. But he, he kind of held, held it together, and it's that, that mental strength as well, isn't it? It is, and we saw it again in the Sandrio. You know, he was he was quite a ways out and ahead, and he got into the Sandrio, and you know, he admitted he made a mistake. He took a bad line. Maxime and Damien flew right over his head. They got 20k on him, and the next time I checked, the next morning, he was 20k out ahead of them again. And he was so cool and collected about it. He just said, "Hey, things happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, and now I get to follow them. It'll be all right." And it was. He, I mean, he's just. He's so solid. He's so cool. He always, there's always a way with Kriegel and, and he pulled it off again. Now, just because Maurer has won the race, it doesn't mean the race is over, not by a long shot. There is a thrilling four-way battle going on right now for second and third place between Damien Lacaz, Maxime uh, Pino, Patrick Von Kennel and Maybe still Pal Takats is in that fight um, too. It's been going on all afternoon and they, from Sexton, uh, they were flying well. You know, they were up high, um, over 3,000 meters at some point. Um, but they've been battling those north winds, haven't they, Gavin? And they just couldn't get over uh, the Hoa Tauern, the Gl Gross Glockner. 
I thought those guys had it. I was checking live weather and I really thought it, would, it looked really strong, but it looked manageable and they were making good distance and good, good ground. And then they just ran into a wall. Uh, Patrick was the first to just say, forget it. I'm going down on final glide and I'm going to get to the valley and walk. Pal, Pal landed up high and did a quick, really quick hike. And he had been out in the lead and I thought, oh no, Pal, you're gonna get so passed. And he didn't really. Uh, Damien came in there and just said, forget it. I'm going to the final glide. So at some point, Maxime fought it the, uh, the longest, but they all just decided at one point, this is a foot race. And they just couldn't push against the wind. I, I called Damien's supporter and he said in the valley, there was hardly any wind. So they re relayed that information as support teams do. And they all kind of went on a final glide down into the valley and now they're hoofing it out on foot. Damien got the farthest and the last I checked right before we went live, he was huffing it. He was just powering up because if he can get off that hill and fly, and by the time we end this broadcast, everybody will know, but if he can get off, he's got, if he gets a 10 to one glide, he'll make it down to just, just down into the valley below the Schmittenho and, and he's got it. He'll, he'll have it. But this race is just keeps proving that anything can happen, but it's, it, he was in the lead and he was smart to just leave, leave the flying and, and turn it into a foot race. And it's going to depend on who's got the strongest pistons at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've all pulled night passes. Um, the person at the most disadvantage is, is probably Pal Takats, who's, who openly admits that the running game is, is, is not uh, his thing, uh, but he has, he has dug deep in the past. Uh, Patrick von Kennel, I spoke to one of his support team earlier, and he also said running isn't really Paddy's thing. Um, but uh, but for someone like Damien Lacaz and Max Pinot, Max Pinot is a, is a great in endurance athlete. He's done a lot of ultras with you know a few thousand meters. That's nothing to him. So maybe it could become a fight between um, Damien and, uh, and 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 Maxime. From yeah, Mithersil, then, it's about 30 kilometers out. So, you know, at, at a kind of 7K hour pace, you know, that's only that's only four hours by by my math. So it could be overnight that they arrive at Schmittenhör. Yeah, but remember that, you know, live tracking shows the straight line distance. When I calculate it from the past, if they've got to walk all the way down and out of that valley and across and then back up, you know, the real distance is something it's something along the lines of 60 or 70 K, I believe. We'll have to check that. But it, I saw 33 miles. Of course, I'm from the States, so I think in miles. But this is no small feat. This is going to be a brutal night for all those guys. And and it's going to be pretty interesting to see who's who's got it at this stage of the race. Absolutely. I mean, 60K is probably more like a eight hours out there. I wonder whether we're going to see a repeat of 2021 when we saw Benoit Uter just do uh, that incredible, you know, he did a 100K push in the last hours of the race to, to make it. But um, one question that we've had is, is what happens if they arrive overnight at, at Schmidenhör? Uh, of course, you can't fly then. Are they then going to run down to uh, Tel MC? And then the, the, the finish isn't actually, the, you know, is the float. So actually, they got to get within 50 metres of the float so i actually spoke to uh, the race director ferdinand fogel actually minutes minutes before this call just to check this point and he actually posed the, the kind of crazy idea that if, if damia for example or maxime arrive at schmidt and say at at four in the morning they could potentially run down to tell and and get the finish um in the water you know at night i don't uh. think that's going to happen though I, I just hope not. Oh, it'd be so soul crushing for those guys. I mean, it'd be, it's just so thrilling to fly off one of the most famous launches in the world and, and land on the raft. So I hope it doesn't go like that for their sake, but it'll, be, it'll, make, it'll keep us all up at night. <laughs> it'll be fascinating <laughs> but, but, to watch. So the other alternative is what happens if, if all four arrive there overnight and then they're all together at Schmidt and her at six o'clock in the morning. And uh, what Ferdy Vogel said was, yeah, it's like, okay, three, two, one, off you go. And four athletes will all depart exactly at the same time. And it's just going to be a, a, a race to that, to that fi finish line. Well, that, that sounds actually kind of dangerous. And I, I would predict if I was in that group, if I was lucky enough to be one of them and that was what was going down, I would predict that it'll be like Benoit and Paul Gushelbauer in 20, 
was it 2019 or 20? No, yeah, it was 2019 when they just decided to walk in together and they shared third place. And that was that was incredible sportsmanship. And I think that that's what those guys would do as well because they've had this amazing battle and they're all sitting there and wouldn't it be great to fly down together and, and share the glory? So that's my prediction. I can't say, maybe they'll just race it out to the end, but then I'd have to give Powell the win because he's the acro guy and he'll just, he'll do something crazy. <laughs> from, Powell, from Powell is not, it's not, he's not going to be hiking down, is he? There's no ah, way in right. a million there's, years he's going to be hiking there's no down. There's no way. There's no way. So he'll just acro right onto the raft. I mean, if anybody's got that move, he does. So he'll just full stall all the way down to the, down to the lake. <laughs> yeah. Now it's going to be a long night, Gavin, not just for those four, not, not just for, for us, but for uh, the whole field. I mean, it's, it's classic Rebel X Alps. 21 athletes have pulled night passes. 21? Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's going to be a long night for a lot of people. Ouch. Well, that, that brings to a close day seven of the Rebel X Alps. As we just said, it's going to be a long night, but it's going to be a fun one. Stay tuned to live tracking. Thank you, Gavin, so much for your, your expertise, your wisdom and insights. Good night from Always us. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Tarquin. Good night.